Welcome to worship on the fifth Sunday of Easter, May 2nd, 2021. Thank you to all who helped with finding confirmation photos of the past 50 years. Uh, the anniversary committee is now looking for more old photos, in particular old photos from the three congregations that were consolidated in 1972 to form Prince of Peace. Uh, those were St. Paul's Lutheran Church in North Bangor, Grace Lutheran Church in, in East Bangor, and Faith United Lutheran Church here in Johnsonville. And please know that the anniversary celebration next year will not be all about the past. We will celebrate the past, the present, and the future of Prince of Peace in various ways. It's just that it's really hard for me to ask you for pictures from the future. So. The Worship and Music Committee met last week, and we talked for a while um, about the fact that we can still not safely sing in worship. We brainstormed ways to provide some sort of substitute while we wait until it's safer to sing together inside. And here's what we came up with. Uh, for the past few months, Martin has been playing at least one familiar hymn during worship, and starting today, one person will be singing along with that hymn, uh, and the rest of us are invited to hum along. Uh, today it will be Tina Johns, and we're looking for volunteers who would be willing to do this uh, from time to time in future weeks. Please let me know if you would be willing to sing uh, a familiar hymn you already know. And we know it's not the same as us all singing together, but our hope is that it will feel a little more uh, normal. Also, it looks like it is now considered safe to sing together outside. So we will have our worship outside in the Grove on the first Sunday of each month, starting in June. And at those outdoor services, we will still need to wear masks, but we will be able to sing together. Uh, and I'll have more details about the, the first such service in the next few weeks. Let us begin our worship with the prelude. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. 
Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Led by the Spirit, Philip encounters an Ethiopian official who is returning to his African home after having been to Jerusalem to worship. Philip uses their encounter to proclaim the gospel to him. Upon coming to faith in Jesus, he is baptized by Philip. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So Philip got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join in. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? The eunuch replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep led to the slaughter and a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? And Philip began to speak, and starting with the scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the, Philip and the eunuch, went down to, into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azioth, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea, the word of the Lord.
From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. reading from 1 John. We love God and others because God first loved us. We cannot say we love God whom we have not seen while hating fellow Christians whom we regularly see. Love towards God is to be matched by love towards others because the essence of God is love. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent into the world God's only Son, so that we may live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent the Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and God's love is perfect in us. By this we know that we abide in God, and God is in us, because we have been given of God's own spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent the Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as the sun is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but love perfect, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because God first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from God is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. My father removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, my father prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord.
The book of Acts recounts the story of the early church, the first few years after the resurrection and ascension of Christ. In its first few months, this young church had a few thousand people in it, and it was growing every day. Peter and John were the primary leaders with the other apostles beside them. They proclaimed the message of Jesus. They preached and they taught. They took care of feeding the poor and hungry in their community. They did so much that they needed some help. So the apostles appointed seven people to be called deacons. These seven would handle the practical things like food distribution so the apostles could focus on prayer and preaching. Things were good. But then tragedy struck just a few months after the church began. One of the deacons, Stephen, got into trouble. He was performing wonders and signs among the people, which angered some of the leaders. And he was arrested on trumped up charges and stoned to death. Well, this death led to pandemonium, as deaths at the hands of authorities sometimes do. A great persecution of the young church began, and just about everyone fled the city of Jerusalem, scared for their lives, and scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Only the apostles were left in Jerusalem. So it was kind of, sort of, in some ways, like what we experienced over the last year. At the beginning of the pandemic, we stopped meeting together completely. Now I know we would like some more normalcy now, but think back to how we started. A year ago, only Martin and I were here in this building for months. The rest of you were scattered, perhaps in your homes, perhaps just traveling to work and back and nothing else. Just like the early church, the church of 2020 was scattered. So what happened? Well, you might expect the church to just wither away. The gospel message silenced forever, but the Holy Spirit had other plans. The Holy Spirit used all those scattered people to proclaim the good news to new people in new places. Enter Philip one of the main characters in today's first reading. Now this is not Philip the Apostle, but a different Philip, one of the deacons. He's not one of those trained to teach the story of Jesus, not one of the inner circle. He's a worker. But now, after being scattered, the Holy Spirit put him in the position of being a teacher and preacher and gave him all he needed. The Holy Spirit led him to a certain desert road, and there he met someone. Now Luke, the author of Acts, refers to this someone once as an Ethiopian, and he refers to him once as a court official, but he refers to him five times as a eunuch. So I think that's probably an important detail. Philip met a eunuch. A eunuch was a man who was castrated before puberty because they never fully developed in the same way as other men. They held a very strange role in society, not female, but not quite male either. Their sexuality, their gender identity was often mocked and ridiculed. Yet some eunuchs, like this man, served important roles in kingdoms like Ethiopia. Because they had no sex drive and could have no children, they were seen as more trustworthy to royal families. But Philip didn't meet this eunuch in Ethiopia. He met him in Israel, where eunuchs had a much more clear role. They were outcast. They were explicitly forbidden from being part of the people of God and were not allowed to enter the temple. So whatever worship this man had done in Jerusalem would have been less than full worship. Yet he clearly revered Jewish scripture because he was reading from the scroll of Isaiah when Philip met him. And Philip asked him, do you understand what you're reading? The eunuch said, how can I? No one has explained it to me. He had access to scripture, he knew the Bible, but he needed someone who knew the God of the Bible to help him understand it. So Philip joined him and helped. Philip showed him how the prophecies of Isaiah pointed to Jesus and told him all about Jesus. The eunuch was deeply moved and wanted to follow Jesus. So he asked Philip this question, what is to prevent me from being baptized? And there's the rub, Philip had to think that question was troubling and complicated. Philip knew scripture. He knew that Deuteronomy 23 clearly forbade eunuchs from being part of the people of God. But he also knew Isaiah 56, which promised that one day eunuchs and all other outcasts would be welcome as part of God's people. So Philip wondered, had Isaiah's prophecy come true now? 
Was today the day that those cast out were welcome? Or was that still to come? Should he honor the law as laid out in Scripture, or should he trust that God was doing a new thing, just as God promised in another part of Scripture? Like the eunuch, Philip found that just having the Bible wasn't enough. He needed someone to help him interpret. Now Luke tells us that the Holy Spirit was strongly with Philip that day, and I believe at this point Philip heard the Holy Spirit answer the eunuch's question. What is to prevent me from being baptized? The Spirit whispered in Philip's ear, nothing. So Philip stopped the chariot and baptized him right then and there. And then the Spirit took Philip away to his next adventure. And Philip knew then that God's grace and welcome are for more people than he ever expected. Throughout the book of Acts, Luke tells us many stories of how the leaders of the church learned again and again to accept and welcome more and more people. That just as Isaiah promised, God welcomes all. And the church has continued to learn this lesson over and over again for 2,000 years because the history of the church is littered with moments when the church forgot that. Women were refused leadership roles for centuries. Congregations were for a time very strictly segregated by race. Children were welcomed, but only if they behaved properly. In other words, they were welcomed, but not as children. Divorced people were unwelcome. People learned to keep their problems to themselves at church, lest they be rejected by others there. I can remember a heartbreaking conversation I once had with a woman named Maggie. Maggie's family had recently moved nearby and was looking for a new congregation. She told me a little of herself, her spouse, and her children, and she asked me if she and her family would be welcome at my church. With a heavy heart, I had to tell her, I'm not sure. I so much wanted to welcome them, but the congregation I was serving at the time had recently voted not to approve a statement that would welcome gay couples, like Maggie and her spouse. It wouldn't have been fair to her had I not told her about that, and she thanked me. I never saw her again. The arc of the salvation story is one that bends slowly, but it bends toward more and more welcoming, more and more acceptance. Throughout the book of Acts, more and more people are accepted as the apostles and other leaders slowly learn that God's love is also for Gentiles, also for women, also for eunuchs, and so on. Over the centuries, that arc has continued to bend, slowly moving toward more and more acceptance, more and more recognition that God's love, God's gift of the Holy Spirit, can never be contained or controlled, that the Spirit blows where it will, often in places we'd never expect. And the church has continued to learn this lesson. Now, we have been very strict here on how we've welcomed people in the past six months because of the COVID pandemic, and that has been wise. But those restrictions will fall away soon. And as they do, let us consider what other restrictions we have up, perhaps unconsciously, what ways we have failed to welcome people, what people we have failed to welcome. May we hear the Holy Spirit whispering in our ears, like she whispered to Philip that day. May we meet God's people on the road and welcome them in God's name, the same way God has welcomed us. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Alive and risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before you, God, the one who promises to listen to us. 
who promises to hear us and who promises to answer in steadfast love. God, in all faithfulness and fruitfulness, you abide in your church and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by the waters of baptism. Water them with the living water and give yourself to the whole church on earth so that it is possible for them to be of your healthy vine, to bear much fruit, also being witness to your love. We raise up today Holy Trinity in Digman's Ferry and their pastor Niels Nielsen. Tend to them as well as you with loving hands as they strive to grow in your word and please you. Hear us, O God. God, maker of the universe and beyond, you have graciously created the heavens and the earth which you offer to all to us, asking nothing in return. As we wonder at the awesomeness, the majestic mountains and the vast seas, the starry nights and the beauty, flowers that are now blooming around us, birds soaring, praising you with song, we ask that you show us to seek the vital connections among all that depend on this earth for life. Let us tend it to it lovingly and treasure everything in it. Hear us, O God. God, ruler of all nations, you rule with justice and love. Give our leaders assurance of your abiding presence so that they lead not by fear and injustice, but with the love and guidance you are willing to give them. Open their hearts and their minds to what you are telling them. Let them work hard to your unrest, hunger, and hatred of this world. Hear us, O God. God, healer of the poor in spirit. You have loved us first so we know how to love and care for one another. We raise up our prayers for all in need of your love. Let us always follow Jesus, searching for and helping those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, fearful, or ailing. Let us provide for their needs, including Katie, June, Grace, Mel, Mel. D, Libby, Libby. Freddie, Deb, Deb. Liz, Liz, Olivia, Olivia. Cynthia, Cynthia. Jason, Jason, Sadie, Sadie. Vivian, Vivian, John. Hear us, O oh God. God of joyfulness, we ask you to bring happiness to those who are celebrating birthdays this week. Lorraine Brands, Blake Cornfell, Benjamin Itterly, Jacob Crock Jr., Linda Wasmer, Jean Genosa, Chris Bee and Owen Jennings. Let their joy last the year long. Hear us, O God. God, our loving Father, you gather us with all the saints by the power of your Holy Spirit, especially with Athenias, Bishop of the Alexandria. With them, may your hearts live forever in your keeping. Hear us, O God. In the hope of new life in Christ our Savior, we offer up our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness, mercy, and unconditional love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And share a sign of God's peace with one another. Peace be with you.
let us pray. Gracious God, you bless us with gifts of guidance, new life, growth in grace, and fruitful labor. Accept the first fruits of time and toil, field and orchard that we offer to you through our sharing of time, talent, and money. Bless and multiply these gifts to our nurture and to the care of your creation for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit upon us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts, satisfy the younger, satisfy the hunger still around us, and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Please wait for the ushers to dismiss you. <laughs>